foundation of family. It is known throughout the entire world that in order for anything to stand, it must first be planted on the right foundation, be it architectural, be it institutional, or be it relational. If it's going to last and stand the test of times, the foundation must be solid. Even Jesus emphasized this point when he began to talk about things of faith and he reminded us that a wise man is a man that builds his house upon the rock. He builds it on a solid foundation and a fool will build it in the sand. He'll build it on something unstable. I want us to understand that when we want to realize if we're going to build something, we need to build it with the right foundation. And if we look at our society and if we want to reclaim our society and start by rebuilding it, by rebuilding the family, then I want us to realize we must rebuild the family on the right foundation uh, because if you look at our America one of the problems that we have is we have too many issues in our family and we have too many fractured families uh, there are too many segments and there are too many separations uh, there are too many compartments and there are too many components uh, there are too many this side and there's too many that side and there's issues that divide us and I believe that the reason why we have so many family issues uh, is because our families have not been built on the right foundation I know I'm not going to make everybody happy this morning but let me preach the gospel truth anyhow the reality of it is most of our families are messed up because they didn't start right in the first place when we look at the issues of our fractured families uh, one of the reasons why I think things are so out of order is because we simply have done things in the wrong time frame when you look at how too many of our children are born, they're born in the wrong time frame. Now let me pause long enough to remind her there's nothing wrong with the child itself. I, I am one that celebrates every life that comes through the birth canal because I know that God ordains everybody that comes into this world. But baby, when you have your child out of season, you're already severing the tithe and breaking the foundation of the family unit. All too often we have too many babies born out of wedlock and we think that God is going to bless our message. And yes, God will bless that child. And yes, there might be some joy, but there come some problems uh, when we do things out of season. Uh, and the reason why there's so much mayhem in our families uh, is because too many of our families have started on the wrong foundation. Uh, not only are we doing things out of season by having babies out of turn, uh, but sometimes we simply move in before we say I do. Uh, and I want us to understand, I don't care how grown we get. Uh, I don't care how logical it seems. I don't care how much we want to learn. Uh, until you make that thing right with God uh, by standing before the man of God and before the audience of God uh, you have fractured the laws of God uh, when you do things out of season uh, it causes some storms to come your way that's not in due time uh, and because our families are made in the wrong foundation uh, we have problems on every side uh, there's a reason why folk can't last any longer it's because their foundation is not right in the 21st century, we've coined phrases like dysfunctional family and baby mama drama and baby daddy issues. The reason why all of that exists is because we simply have done things in the wrong foundation. So what can we do? First of all, we need to understand that not only are things done out of order, but I just believe that there is things are going awry because there's a lack of respect for God's first institution. Oftentimes it bothers me when I hear people talk about marriage so cavalierly and so carelessly. I've heard people say, oh, marriage ain't nothing but a piece of paper. They don't know what real marriage is all about. I've heard people say, well, if it don't work out this time, we can get a divorce and I'll try it with somebody else. They don't know what marriage is all about. When there is no respect for God's institution, uh, will treat something that's holy uh, with such an, an adverse attitude uh, that there's no way that God can bless it. Uh, can I give you some very sad statistics uh, about marriage in America? Uh, if I look at the records, uh, the records tell me uh, that the American average uh, divorce rate is 50%. Uh, it's a sad commentary uh, that one out of two marriages that come together don't stay together. It's a sad commentary uh, that they will say I do on one one hand and I don't on the other hand it's a sad commentary because what we're 
teaching our children is that marriage is fickle and it is temporary. It's a sad commentary because we don't understand and we don't respect what God has ordained. What's worse than the divorce rate is how long marriages last today. You know, I've always marveled at people uh, that are married for 40 and 50 and 60 years uh, because when you look at today's track record in America, the sad reality is uh, the average marriage only lasts 8.2 years. You get together and say, I'm going to love you for life. And 8.2 years later, you're saying you're getting on my nerves. You get together, say, I do. And 8.2 years later, you're saying this, get away from me. Uh, you get together, say, we're going to be in it for always. And 8.2 years, we're saying that it's time to find something else. Uh, it's a sad commentary when our marriages can't stand the test of time. Uh, and the reason why we can't stand the test of time uh, is I thoroughly believe we don't understand what we are getting into. Amen. When we look at the foundation of the family. If we don't get marriage right, we won't get anything else right. I just believe that the reason why there is such a problem with marriage is because people really don't know what marriage is all about. Can I walk us through the scripture? Because I know I'm not going to get a whole lot of amens and this is not a shouting sermon. But we need to be educated in the word of God, how we need to handle our own household that, so that the children that we raise and the grandchildren that we see don't make the same mistakes in this society. We got to start teaching them what God expects and ordains in a marriage. Can I walk through the text, if you will? Because when we look at this particular story, the Bible declared that after God made creation, he made his crown and glory with man and he said it is not good for man to be alone let me make a help suitable for him let me give him somebody to walk with let me give him somebody to build with let me give him a partner in this thing and so when I begin to look at the institution of marriage the first thing that people have to understand is that marriage is God ordained can I preach the way I feel this morning it bothers my mind when people start to violate the principles of God and think that they can stand before the altar man and man and think that's a marriage it bothers my spirit when people try to violate the principles of God and woman and woman go stand on the altar and say I do baby that ain't no marriage that's a mess because marriage is God ordained it's more than standing before the justice of the peace it's more than standing in front of a God congregation it's more than saying I do is understanding that God brought the man and the wife together and made that holy meeting so that you would know I've got a partner in life. Can I preach this Sunday morning? For the married folk, you can testify that you didn't meet by accident, but by divine providence. I know you didn't orchestrate the circumstances by which you met. I know it wasn't on your timetable and your radar, but you ought to praise God that in due season, God know who to send, when to send, and how to send. And can I preach this up in here? One of the problems that our society have is we got the sending process backwards. We got women looking for husbands when we ought to let the woman sit still because the Bible says a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So we got to realize uh, we got to get this process right. Uh, let God do the sending uh, and let you do the waiting. Help me, Holy Ghost in the house. Amen. Marriage is out of order because we forget that it's not just a civil thing. It's a spiritual thing. Marriage is not only God ordained, but it is a spiritual union. And one of the issues that we have is we become so carnal in everything we do uh, until we move the spirituality uh, out of everything we do. Uh, we get married for all the wrong reasons. Uh, we get married because they look good. Uh, we get married because they got a good bank account. Uh, we get married because they got a good credit score. Uh, we get married because they got a good future. Uh, we get married because they make me feel good. Uh, baby, I stopped by to remind you uh, when you marry, uh, there is some spiritual influences uh, that come with that person and marriage is just as much a spiritual bond as it is a legal bond and if the spirits do not 
upset that's going to bring chaos and confusion in your house that's why God told the children of Israel not to intermarry with other cultures it's not that he had a problem with color God don't care about color but what he cares about that is the spirit that's in the person that's why he reminds us believers ought not marry non-believers don't bring that negative spirit into your spirit because you think you're going to pick them up but they going to bring you down if you don't believe me listen to the testimony of Solomon Solomon said I've been around the world had more women than I should but each woman that I married brought a different spirit and that spirit upset my house and because my house was upset my nation was upset we got to realize that marriage is a spiritual bond And when it's spiritual, that leads me to the next point. The scripture teaches us that God orchestrated the marriage. God made Adam, brought Adam, his wife Eve. Eve looked at Adam and Adam looked at Eve. And Eve recognized that this is nothing like anything else. I can't treat her like I treat the bear. I can't treat her uh, like I treat the dog. Uh, I can't treat her uh, like I treat the cattle. Uh, I can't treat her uh, like I treat the birds. Uh, I can't treat her uh, like I treat the fish. uh, Because this is now bone of my bone. Uh, This is now flesh of my flesh. Uh, God gave me somebody uh, that's a part of me. Uh, Marriage is a union. uh, where the two come together and be one and because there's a union we got to understand that union because it's oneness means it ought to be an unbreakable bond can I preach the way I feel sometimes you're going to go through hell but you go through it together sometimes you're going to have problems but you have them together sometimes you're going to mess up but you mess up together because when there's a union there is no problem that will separate us there is no demon that will separate us there is no sickness no distress no amount of poverty no mistakes because baby you're a bone of my bone flesh of my flesh whatever we go through we go through together marriage is not just a saying can I preach it a little further It's also a commitment. I say this all the time in my premarital counseling session. The only difference between the marriages that last and the ones that don't is the ones that last that say, you know what? We're going to make it anyhow. You made me mad yesterday, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know I got some growing to do, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know you're not the best cook, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know I don't put you on a house on a hill, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know we all got some issues and some dysfunctions, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know your mama didn't like me and your daddy didn't approve, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know we got some issues on the outside and your girlfriend is telling you what you shouldn't take, but we're going to make it anyhow. I know the boys are telling me, boy, you should have made another choice but we gonna make it anyhow when you marry there is a commitment that we in this covenant relationship this spiritual bond ordained by God that brought us together that says we gonna make it anyhow and wherever I go I go because you helped me get there and wherever I am I am with you by my side we're gonna make it anyhow Marriage is a commitment. We don't understand what marriage is about. But marriage is centered around love. I think I ought to say that again. Marriage is centered around love. Too often, our marriages are centered around lust. Amen. The dress fit right. She looked good in them heels. She do her hair just right. I want that one. He got nice biceps. Chest nice and broad. I want that one. But guess what? You live long enough. The dress gonna fit a little different. 
you get to live long enough. The hairstyle's gonna change. You live long enough, the biceps gonna droop and the chest is too. And when the lust is over, what do you have? We get married because we look at the wrong stuff. But I've learned that when you marry based on love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of faults. Marriage will say, I'm with you simply because I want to give you the very best part of me. Mary says, I'm with you because I want to spend the rest of my life making you happy. Uh, Mary says, the reason why we're together is because, baby, you make my life better and I want to make yours better. And not only do I want to give you the best part of me, uh, I want to protect you from the worst side of me. Uh, when we look at what real love is, uh, the Bible teaches us uh, that love is patient. Uh, love allows the person to grow up. Uh, love is kind. Uh, love knows how to treat each other right. Uh, love seek is not his own. Uh, Baby, I'm not in this union uh, for what you bring to the table. Uh, I'm in this union uh, for what I add to your life. Uh, love is not puffed up. Uh, love says I'm not going to thump up my chest uh, and say I'm the man. Uh, I'm going to lean down and lift you up uh, because you are my woman. Uh, we got to understand uh, that when we get together in the consummation of marriage, uh, it ain't a lust thing. Uh, it's a love thing. Uh, love says uh, I'll forgive you when you wrong me. Uh, and love says uh, I'll do right by you all the days of my life. I don't need the ring. I need your presence. And because you're my wife, I'm going to honor you in the house. I'm going to honor you in the streets. I'm going to honor you in the marketplace because I love you. I'm going to be right by you. They don't know what marriage is. And can I get real? As I get ready to take us home, I think marriages fail because people don't know how to act in marriage. Amen, lights in here. One of the problems that we have is we take a single mindset into a marital union and think we can take that same mindset and make that work in the marriage. But baby, you got to learn how to act once you get married. Because truth be told, there are some things that change. I've heard people say, well, when you get married, things don't change. Oh, yes, they do. The dynamics change because you're no longer by yourself. The spiritual covering change because you honor God. Your expectations change because God has a different thing for you. And your actions ought to change. Can I preach the way I feel this Sunday morning? Women need to know how to act in the marriage. Can I walk a little? bit of biblical scripture because Paul reminds us that wives need to submit to their own husbands and it reminds me of our relationship with Jesus the Christ because he's my savior I willfully give myself to him because he's my provider I willfully give myself to him because he's my protector I willfully give myself to him because he's my redeemer I willfully give myself to him women gotta learn how to will Willfully give uh, themselves to their own husbands, uh, not because of what he does, uh, but because of who he is, uh, because God gave him to me. Uh, let me willfully give myself to him. And husbands got to learn how to act also. One of the problems that we have in our culture is young men don't know how to act like husbands. The Bible says you need to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. You need to love your wife so much that her needs become your priority. You need to love your wife so much that you will sacrifice your comfort for her good. You need to love your wife so much uh, that you need to lay your life out on the altar uh, that she might be redeemed. Uh, how do I know? Because when I think about uh, how Jesus loved the church, uh, he loved the church so much uh, that he stepped out of glory uh, for the church. Uh, he loved the church so much uh, that he walked this world uh, for 33 years uh, for the church. Uh, he loved the church so much uh, that when he saw it broken uh, and it needed 
redeeming. He decided to go to Calvary and stretch his hands. He loved the church so much that he bled and died that the church might live. I'm so glad that Christ loved the church. And can I let you be really glad? He loved the church so much that he went to the Father's house to make a place. He loved the church so much that he said, I've got room for all of you. He loved the church so much that he's coming back for his bride. He's coming back to present it to the Father. He's coming back. I'm so glad. That Christ loved the church. Mm. Glory. That Christ loved the church so much that he didn't leave the church in a mess. Can I give you a bonus? You see, in the Hebrew culture, the groom had to prove that he could take care of the bride. And he had to give a down payment to the bride and her family to not only let you know that I can take care of you, but you ought to know I'm coming back for you. I'm leaving for a moment to go get some stuff ready, but I'm giving you the down payment to let you know, baby, everything you need to survive till I get back. I left it with you, uh, and I stopped by to remind you uh, that Christ loved the church so much uh, that he gave a down payment uh, to remind us he's coming back. Uh, I'm so glad uh, he loved the church so much uh, that he left the Holy Ghost uh, that we got to be like the bride, uh, keep our lamps trimmed and burning uh, because I'm reminding uh, of the ten virgins uh, they were supposed to wait uh, till the groom comes. Uh, I want to tell us uh, he loves us, uh, empowered us, uh, but we got to look forward to the groom. Yeah. Let's get the foundation right. Let's get back to marriage first, children second. I know we live in a culture where we want to prove stuff, but baby, the only thing you test drive is a car. Amen. I heard folks say, why buy a cow when you can get the milk for free? First of all, you ain't marrying no cow. Amen. Secondly, you're getting more than milk. Let's get this right. And let it start with the household of faith. Before we get ready to pray, as bad as the statistics of marriage is in the world, Believe it or not, it's worse in the church. We ought to live the standard. We ought to show the world how marriage looks. That maybe we done messed up. But if we teach our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, maybe if they start on the right foundation, we'll have a better generation to make a better world. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.